Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 film Metamorphosis. It's a South Korean film. It's a Shudder original. And when I'm recording this and putting it up, it is out today on Shudder. Now, apologies, I would have put this review up ahead of time like I usually do, but I didn't get my screener for it until yesterday afternoon. And I just didn't have the time to watch it and do the video and put it up and all that. So going up same day. So when, if you're seeing this on Thursday, the 2nd of July, it's available on Shutter this day. So go ahead and hit it up if it sounds interesting to you. So um, one of the things I want to or a few things I want to say about this one, there will be no spoilers since this is a film that has just hit Shutter and no one had really seen it prior. So I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. So I'll give people an idea if they really want to watch this or not. Now, Disclaimer on that, this is part of a subgenre of horror that I typically don't go for. I don't get excited about, and a film has to be a particular, uh, particularly good or do something really, really new and crazy in order for me to want to watch that and want to go out of my way to recommend it to people. So listen to this review and listen for the certain things that you think might be like key things to for you personally, and then you can make a decision whether you should watch it or not. I would say that I'm theorizing that people who are into the possession film subgenre of horror would probably enjoy this film. I'm not big into it, so I didn't really enjoy it that much. It was fine, but I just... I can't highly recommend it because I didn't get excited about it. But there are things that were really good about it that I did enjoy, but I'm just saying for overall. But anyway, so this was directed by Hong Seon Kim, uh, who did films Traffickers, The Con Artists, and The Chase. Now, I've heard of The Chase before, and I've been meaning to watch that film, so maybe this will be my impetus to, to get there, because I do think the directing in this was handled very well. The cinematography as well, it looks good. This is a film that looks very good. So if you're into films, if you're into possession films, and you're into films that look really nice and are directed well and have great cinematography, then this is it. Um, the acting also is very good in this. And, and one of the biggest things about it is almost all the roles are relatively demanding roles. So it's it was pretty impressive what the cast was able to get done because they have to hit a range of, of acting within the film and, and you'll kind of you'll see why um so like i said it's a south korean films it's a shutter original there's not a whole lot of backstory on it but um something i am going to be doing now with these ones i'm not doing spoilers for i'm going to give you a quick little synopsis about it i don't want to give the synopsis that shutter gave me because it tells you way too much in my opinion so i'm just going to give you my sentence or two of what i think you should know going into it to see if that interests you or not so basically it's about a priest who has a, a terrible confrontation with a demonic possession uh, and doing an exorcism. And then uh, years go by and that same demon reappears and starts to target his extended family. So that's all I'm going to say about it. So does that sound interesting to you? If it does, you probably want to watch this if that sounds interesting to you. So it immediately looks and feels a lot like The Exorcist, the very beginning scene uh, is very, very Exorcist-like, although happily for me, it kind of departed from that after that beginning setup scene, so that I kind of enjoyed about it. It did kind of do a bit of its own thing, but the very beginning, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so much like The Exorcist, and those are the things I kind of hate. Like, I've seen so many possession films that are a lot like The Exorcist and are heavily inspired by The Exorcist that every time I see that, I kind of roll my eyes. So it was nice, though, that after that initial scene, they got to something new, something interesting, something more fresh, uh, because I was like, oh my god, I hope I don't have to sit through almost two hours. Yes, it's almost two hours. Runtime, not good. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't have to sit through almost two hours of a ripoff of The Exorcist, basically, and it's not, so that's that's very good. Although, like as I bring up the, the runtime right now, so it was basically an hour and 50 minute film with credits and all that. So it's just not, it wasn't warranted. Like with horror films specifically, you probably want to hit around the hour and a half mark or just be unbelievably engaging and have so much story to tell that if people are watching an almost two hour film, they don't feel like it's almost two hours. This feels like it's two hours. 
uh, and that's not a good thing. There are some things that definitely could have been cut down scene-wise. There are some things that could have been cut out altogether, to be honest, and really that should have happened to keep it a lot you know, shorter, a lot tighter, and I think that could have helped a lot with this film for me, but it's not a bad film, though. Like, technically, from all the technical standpoints, I think it was very well executed. It's just, are you a fan of this type of story or not? And I, I'm really not. Um, they create a great atmosphere in this, I will say. Set design and props in particular, they do a really, really good job with that. That is... Uh, one of the things that really impressed me, uh, it seems like they put a lot of thought and a lot of prep time into creating their environments, creating the atmosphere, and um, the music helps with that, the directing, the cinematography, it's certainly the acting really, really helps with that to create an overall cool, dark, terrible atmosphere, which, you know, you can kind of feel when you're watching it, so I do like that aspect of it. Um... Also, it just looks drab. Like, the way they shot the film, it it's like maybe they leached some color out of it. They keep it kind of, like, dark and kind of blues for most of the part. Although there are times where it's more light. But for the most part, it's pretty, pretty dark. Uh, there's a good push and pull of kind of trying to figure out what's kind of really going on versus what's really not going on. Because there are some things that happen where you're like, okay... That just happened, but is it like real life happened or is it in someone's mind happened? And so at least for a while, there's kind of a good push and pull of trying to get that figured out where you're a bit confused and you're just like, uh, I don't know what's what right now. And that's good because that creates interest. Um, through a series of events, there's a situation created where you don't know what will happen next or who will end up doing what. You could think pretty much anything would happen at any time. So I do like when films do that type of thing where they create an environment where you're just like anything could go in this case. And I do think they kind of create that relatively early on with the film. So it opens up possibilities. Um, my only issue is that um, they took that opportunity a few times to, to go some interesting new places and then other times they didn't. Um, so it's... It's a half and half, in my opinion. There's one part that made me make a noise out loud. Because what happened would really, really hurt. And it's actually shot and acted in a very nonchalant way. Which makes you kind of cringe even more with it. If you've watched it, or if you do watch it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's one of those things that... There are certain things in films that when they happen to someone, people go... Ugh. Like, I... It was one of those moments where you're just like, ooh, I could just... I could just tell that that would hurt so bad. But the way they do it, it's very nonchalant, which was kind of an interesting ju juxtaposition of what that would actually do to someone versus what it does in, in the film. And it doesn't feel out of place the way they did it, though, either. Uh, the writing is actually pretty good uh, because there's family deterioration in this film, and it actually feels very, very realistic. Um, to what degree the deterioration is and in what ways, I'm not going to talk about because that would be too spoilery, but the familial relationships really feel real. And, and that's a good thing. That does speak to good writing. It speaks to good character development. It speaks to good dialogue. And it certainly speaks to the acting, which I already praised a lot for this film. Uh, there's a portion where they include people beyond the real story of what's going on into the film. And I honestly think they should have just cut all that out. Cut all those people out. Because it didn't end up mattering that much in the end. Yes, it ends up being a way to move a portion of the story, but it could have been done a different way and relatively easily with who was already included. It became too late, in my opinion, to introduce those characters, and it just didn't feel like it mattered that much. And it just felt like it added extra runtime that we didn't need at an almost two-hour film uh, that does have a tendency to drag at times, which, you know, that's no good. Uh, there is a pretty good twist towards the end of this film that I did quite enjoy. And there is a, for, you know, if you're open to it, there is a pretty impactful ending to it um, for the implications that it has on everyone involved in the story. So if you like those types of things, um, I was happy with the twist. I did think the twist was a good one for this type of film, but it just wasn't enough to sell me on the entire film in general. Uh, this is a film that, yeah, I'm glad I watched it. I, I'm down to watch every film once, and I would recommend it. Like, 
I'm like I am recommending it to people who like possession films. I do think people who are into that subgenre would like it, but past that, I'm not really going to recommend it. I wouldn't watch it again. But part of that, like I said, that's my bias of of my personal taste. Um, yeah. So, like I said, the ending it actually had some good impact. It actually was a decent ending. The problem is the ending was so drawn out. And that's one of the things I really don't like in film is when they take an ending and they have so many moments where you're like, oh, okay, so they could end it here. But then they keep it going. And it doesn't feel like they kept it going to get to eat an even more satisfying moment. It feels like they're just stretching it out to stretch it out. Like, And this kind of had that. Um, they, It just goes back to cut the run down. down run time down they they could have cut some things out and trimmed some things down and i really wish they would have but you know uh there's a mixture of practical and cg effects in this and they look good both of them look really good this goes back to what i was saying with the film with the technical aspects are done really well in this film um so i was very very happy with that visually it's very appealing it's a good uh visual immersive film in my opinion um they already talked about the acting. Okay, so the last thing I have to say is the main evil is used to bring up real-life issues like family tension and stresses, dealing with starting life in a new place, having to deal with neighbors you don't really feel you can trust or connect with, and when you choose to engage in a profession that puts loved ones in harm's way. So it does have a, a lot of, you know, subtext to it, even some that's, that's more on the surface because... Obviously, you see, like, I was talking about the familial, de the family deterioration. Um, that's something that's very much on the surface, and it, but it's done well. Um, so it doesn't feel like you're getting bashed over the head with anything. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's saying some things that are kind of under the skin of it, and that's, and that's nice. I always like to see that in film. So, what do I give this film? So, with five stars possible, half stars in play, I feel like, for my personal taste... I want to give it on the lower end, but I would honestly say, looking from as objective a standpoint as I can, I'm going to give it a three-star rating. I think it's, like I said, all the technical stuff's really good. There's some good writing to it. There's a lot of good stuff, but it's too long. It needed to be cut down some. Um, yeah. I mean, and you might be watching this and saying, I feel like his bias against possession films is coming in a little too much on that rating, and that may be. It's just hard for me to, to make that determination, but... Uh, go ahead and put some comments down here. Uh, let me know, especially if you saw it and you were a fan of it. I want to know from the perspective of someone who saw it and really enjoyed it. Like, what did you see in it? What did you pull out of it? And what got you excited about that film? So put some comments down here and we'll talk about it. But do me a quick favor. If you like any of the reviews or videos that I do, hit that subscribe button because that's your way to repay me. It's like it takes a second. It's totally painless. And it really does mean a lot to me. I really do appreciate that. Uh, but if you're going to subscribe or you already have, make sure you also hit the notification bell because that makes sure that you know when I have a new video going up or when I'm live streaming because I do that and it's a lot of fun. But regardless, thanks everyone for checking this out and until next time, keep it brutal.